Once again, it's good to see everybody. And uh, John is right, running from the practice field to in here. Not the same as when I was 23, 24 years of age. But uh, it's good to see everyone. And hopefully, everybody's looking forward to a, a happy new year as well. So um, I'll turn it over to you guys. How big of a challenge is a three-headed attack, a wide receiver like the Bengals present? Well, they, they, they've got some really good receivers. And the quarterback is, is a good player as well. Uh, it definitely presents some issues for you. But I think our guys are looking forward to the challenge. And we'll have our hands full. I mean, they, they, all three of those guys are very, very good at what they do. I know you say, I don't want you to give strategy away, but I know you often say, we're going to kind of play our game. And regardless of who your opponent is, do you have, can you still stick to that considering this is such a unique situation with the talent that they have at the wide receiver spot? I think you, t you can to a degree, John, but uh, you do have to, you know, look at some different things at times just because of the, the level uh, of talent and the way they've sp they're spread out. It's not like it's one guy, one featured guy or two guys. I mean, and the running back's pretty good as well. I mean, Mixon does a good job uh, coming out of the backfield. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, you still have to be who you are and what has helped us to be a, a good defense. So you can't completely get away from what you, what you do best. And, you know, we'll see how it all works out. Even though you uh, haven't played them since 2019, they've played AFC East. I mean, in what scouting for upcoming the Browns and other teams this year, have you kind of been able to keep a little, familiarize yourself a little bit with the Bengals? Because they've been on the film, you know what I mean? I do know what you mean, but no, I mean, for us, it's all about that opponent and, and you put so much energy and effort into preparing for that opponent. So I, no, I really, my familiarity began this week when we start our preparation. So just what do you, why do you think he has become so good at getting the ball out of his hands? I, I would imagine some of it has to do with the emphasis that the coaches are playing on getting the ball out. Um, you know, they've had some, some sacks over the year and one of the ways to reduce that is getting the ball out fast and, and having complementary routes to that. And the coaches and the quarterback, they've done a really good job of adjusting and getting the ball out and then having routes to complement getting the ball out. So uh, really smart on their part, and we've got to do some things to try to combat that. How do you feel like the rotation between Dane and Kyrie has been going the last I think uh, for Dane and Kair, they both have done a good job for us, um, both tackling and playing the ball down the field and, and just you know, getting some of those attacks off of uh, the corner opposite Tre Davis. So now this week is a different challenge, as John mentioned earlier, uh, because of the, the talent and how spread out it is. Uh, but they both have done a good job for us. Leslie, team-wide uh, tackling, missed tackles has been a topic at times this season. Where do you feel like the team is at right now uh, in, in that regard? You know, really feel good about the way we tackled this past weekend, Jay. That was uh, impressive. I mean, I was an offense that was averaging 189 yards rushing. And for our guys to hold them to 80 yards and 2.8 yards per carry, you got to be tackling well. And uh, you're right, there have been some games where we didn't tackle as well or we weren't where we needed to be gap-wise. Uh, but in large part, overall, we've done a good job of being where we're supposed to be in tackling. We just got to make sure that we're consistently doing it, uh, much like we did this past weekend. And along those lines, I know it, it can be somewhat subjective, missed tackles, right, depending on who's looking at it, but there are some numbers that suggest Tremaine has only missed one tackle all this season. I don't know if your numbers would back that up, but if you could maybe speak to the growth that he's shown in being a sure tackler as your middle linebacker. I mean, that's so key to what we do on defense, having a, a middle linebacker who is a sure tackler because He's so often at the point of attack. Um, our defensive line has done a good job for us. Uh, and when they have struggled being in their gaps, that, that puts a lot of pressure on the linebackers. But uh, they've done a good job of being gap sound uh, for the most part of this season. And that allows Tremaine, when he's at the point of attack, to make those plays because he is a sure tackler. And uh, that is growth from his first year to where he is currently. Uh, tremendous growth in bringing his feet, using his hands, uh, putting his eyes on a target, taking great angles to the football. These are all improvements over the last couple of years. And, and this year in particular, he's taken a big leap. Uh, and some of it, I think, uh, is his confidence as well. He's, he's more confident. Uh, he's stronger now. 
uh, and he's more experienced, so I think that has a lot to do with it, but he is for sure a good tackler. When you're watching Trey out there, how far off do you feel like he, obviously, every, coming back from an ACL injury is no easy task, but do you see him improving with each game? How far off do you feel like he is from being his full self, just from what you're able to watch? I think he's really close, Elena. I don't know, uh, like I said before, if he'll get to that Pro Bowl player that we saw before the injury, because for most guys it takes at least a full year uh, to get back to where you were playing. And he's only been on the field, what, maybe three, four weeks, at, I think. Uh, so, but what I see is his confidence level has grown. Uh, he's, there's much less trepidation when it comes to getting out of my break, putting my foot in the ground and planting and driving him. A lot of things that early on when he began to play, uh, he was thinking a lot, you know, what's going to happen if I push off on this foot? What's going to happen if I break in this direction? That's kind of gone now. So he's playing a lot more freer. And I think he's playing better. Uh, and that's what you were hoping for when he got back on the field. He began to improve you know, each week. You were talking last week about um, DeMar showing real strides in the communication piece. And I'm curious, when Michael went out and without Trey for most of the season until he got back, has, did that impact the way that you guys were able to you know, do some things pre-snap in terms of disguising the, the, the looks that, for the most part, while well, you've been here, teams have talked about how well you guys have been here. Oh yeah, man, it definitely uh, affected uh, some things. But, you know, DeMar's only in his second season. So here you are thrust into the starting lineup and not only do you have to get lined up properly, you got to help other people get lined up uh, because of the absence of, of a mic. And then sometimes Jordan wasn't out there either. So uh, there was a lot put on his plate. Uh, he's gotten better, as I mentioned before. Uh, but yeah, it, it definitely affected some of the things we wanted to be able to do. And, and rightfully so. I mean, he's a young safety who's still learning. When Micah and Jordan started off their first year with us, they were similar in some ways as far as their growth was concerned. So uh, it's a natural progression, and he's gotten better. And a year from now, he'll be even better. You know, we'll be able to do more things from a disguise standpoint. But that's just a, a product of where we are. Along those lines, how much, does it, more? how much does it help DeMar that Micah chose to stay here? And you know, I just saw him out here working uh, on something just after practice. But how invaluable can that be for Demar that Micah chose not to go somewhere else, and he's here? He can ask him, you know, whatever he wants, basically whenever he wants. I, I think it's been invaluable uh, in a lot of ways. The fact that he's in the meetings, he's at practice. I see him in those guys' ear all the time, talking to him, uh, just painting a picture of some things that he sees. And then uh, when 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 he's at the games, you know, he's talking to us. I, I, I was watching him on the sideline in our game. And of course, it's freezing cold out there. And there he is talking to our safeties about where they are lining at, what he's seeing in between plays. I mean, that, you, 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 I mean that's, that's so important uh, for young safeties uh, for, to have a, a, a Pro Bowl player uh, spending that much time and just sharing some of his wisdom with you. It has to have helped uh, DeMar for sure. And I'm sure with Cam Lewis and Daquan as well. I mean, I'm sure it helped those guys also. So, all right, thank you.